Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Okay, Miss Missy, two press on. I was trying to get my camera to get put up here on the dashboard, but it won't stay. I guess I left the gym, but I was going to do a story time with you guys. I'm heading to uh, my sister house so she can help me wash this hair. Mm, it look real dark. Crap. Hopefully it'll be okay. Well, I got it stuck here. Hopefully I don't go over no humps or nothing. It'll be, it'll be okay. All right, we off. Okay, my first story time is about my spooky story time. To me, it's spooky, even though it's nothing like scary or anything or haunted but the time i know a lot of people don't know but the time my husband got into his car accident that was the worst worst few months of my life we were supposed to get married november we we're supposed to get married in december december 12 2012 we had to go down to the courthouse and get all the paperwork like november it was like november 27 right after thanksgiving i think it was or right before thanksgiving um i don't want to cry y'all but this is spooky on my behalf i do not want to cry please don't let me cry but uh we wind up going down to the courthouse he's been married before i've never been married before it's my first time being married um uh, we've been together at that point it was like five years we've been together for five years we was already living together that's another story time we met each other on south beach child moved in a week later we've been together ever since working on going on 15 years now but um november 27 the end of november got the paperwork from the uh courthouse he know the process i don't know the process honey i was like what is what we got going on the lady's like sign here sign here I signed. She said, put your right hand up. I put my right hand up. Um, My website going to be up soon, y'all, too. Because I got so many people asking me about my press on nails. And I don't have nothing up. All I could do is give you my Instagram page. So it's Miss Missy 2 press on Instagram page. I posted. But um, we walk out. He gave me a hug. And he was like, baby, I love you so, so much. And I want to spend the rest of my life with you. And we've been balling out. We've been having a good time clubbing. We still, he already got two kids. I don't have any just yet. So we're trying to have a good time. We're trying to enjoy our life. We're trying to travel, you know, and just enjoy time being spent with each other. Next thing you know, I was doing my little hustling part because my mom just paid for my sister. My mom and dad just paid for my sister wedding not too long ago. So of course, we are twins and now she had to pay for another wedding not even almost a year apart from each other so i was trying to hustle and just try to you know make some extra money on the side because at that time i was working for um a concierge at a a, a condo a million dollar condo and can I go? yeah so i was doing my little side hustle you know house sitting babysitting dog walking i did it all i did it all money ain't got no face on it besides that money face um i'm all over the place y'all because i'm trying not to dwell too much on the subject but he ended up going out and i'm like dang i'm over here working and trying to hustle and make this money you know he make his his money too and you know you want to go out and celebrate before you get remarried is what he's saying which i understand want to make you you want to have a good time before you get remarried because you know what comes with marriage i don't come with marriage so he's pretty much teaching me everything um cut to the chase child december whatever that is december 1st it was december 1st because it was like three four o'clock in the morning when the accident happened so of course i'm tired i'm at home and the end of november i think it was december the uh november 30th, I think it was. The 29th? Do November got 30 days in it? Whatever, child. But, um, he was like, uh, babe, I'm finna go out. I'm at home. I got the dog. I'm at home. And he was like, babe, I'm finna go out with my homeboy. And I'm like, damn. 
We got photos. We had photos that we paid $800 for to get taken at 6 o'clock in the morning because they want to take the picture with the sun coming up. And I'm like, you finna go out 1 o'clock at night. It's always almost like 1. It's almost like 12 o'clock at night at this point. And I'm like, damn, you finna go out and we got to get up in the morning to take these pictures. And then after you take these pictures, I got to go home, take a shower, and then head to the job for my side job. I was pissed. And I'm like, we got too much to do before this wedding. And I'm like, okay, look. No. No. I, I, I'm upset. I'm putting my foot down. No, I'm mad. But I'm finna take the car. This time, the BMW had broke down, child. Mm, whatever. So I had my little, my lease still. And I was like, okay, well, you ain't finna leave me carless. So I don't know who finna come get you. I don't know who finna do that because I'm not giving you my car. I need to make sure I'm able to do my errands and if I want my car in my front yard, period. And I'm thinking that'll stop him from going somewhere. It didn't stop his ass at all. It didn't stop him. He wound up calling every homeboy he can possibly call to come slide with him to some pool hall or whatever. And I'm like, damn, he's really that determined to go out tonight. Why? I just left the gym, y'all, my bad. Why? So I can't sleep without him because I'm from Miami. He's from North. So I'm, he didn't move me to a whole nother city, kind of, you know. So I'm not familiar with the area too much. Even though I was here for a while, I guess I never went anywhere without him. Never slept in the house without him. But I knew I had to get off. So let me just keep my mind off of him and let him go enjoy himself. Girl, I took me a Benadryl. I took me a Benadryl, y'all. And all I know, I don't know what made me wake up. What well, the phone calls made me wake up. My phone kept going off, kept going off. By this time, 3 o'clock, three 3.30, 3 my phone kept going off. And I'm like, why is my phone? What's going on? And by 4 o'clock in the morning, um, his homeboy called me and was like, okay, Hey, I need you. You need to get to the hospital. It may have been an accident. And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. They always play like that. They always pretend like, shh, shh, break a break a one, two. They be on the uh, uh, radio, pretend to be a police around the house. They pretend that stuff happened. It don't really happen. Y'all need to stop doing that too, because shit happens. I didn't take them seriously. So I'm like, yeah, whatever. And I hung up and tried to doze back off with my baby next to me, my dog. And there's a whole bucket on the turnpike. They crazy. A whole bucket. Last night, last week was a sofa. Whole section of somebody dropped off in the middle of the turnpike. <laughs> but um, I hung up. Next thing you know, his best friend, wife called me, and was like, "Hey, you know, we serious. You know, they've been a they've been in a horrible accident, and I I put pictures in. I gotta find them." He been in a horrible accident. You please get up and go to the hospital. Please get up and go to the hospital. And I'm just at that point, I guess froze. And I'm like, is it? Is everybody serious? Like, am, am I dreaming? Is this a prank? So I said, okay, okay. You know, I told his wife, you know, I'll call her back. So I'm like, okay. And not even after, not even a minute after she hung up, um, my husband, mom called. And she was like, baby, get up. Get up right now. Get up. And I'm like, what is going on? Why everybody keep calling me? Why everybody keep calling my phone? Why are they playing? And she was like, no, this is not a joke. Not a joke. And I know when she's serious. She said, you need to get up. I'm on my way to come get you now. Y'all, I had to black out. I had to black out because I don't remember getting in no car. I don't remember getting dressed. camera fall it looks like it's falling it is falling uh i gotta find a better way how to do this but um i don't remember anything all i remember my sister called me oh i called her one of them and i boohoo cried i was crying i was crying i'm like this can't be real just y'all this can't be real like people calling me about this right now this can't be real 
and my sister was like, Kate, you scared me so much. Like, I thought somebody didn't kill you, like, was killing you. And she was like, that's the worst cry she ever, ever heard in her life. But somehow I ended up at the hospital. I don't even remember all that. That's all a blur. Y'all, when I seen my whole entire family and my husband family in the hospital, in the waiting room, my heart, my heart, I don't know if anybody ever had anything tragic happen like that in their life, but you could have took my heart out, stumped on it, threw it in the water, cut it up in pieces, go back and get it, and try to sew it together. Like, that was, that's how I felt. It was just so painful. And I'm like, this has got to be a movie. This has got to be a movie. I'm dreaming. And then when they finally brought him to the hospital, they airlifted him. They went to the, got in the helicopter. They dropped him off at the hospital. And they told me that, um, okay, he only want, he want to see his wife real bad. He want to see his wife. And I'm like, is he? Cause nobody was saying nothing nobody was saying nothing for a long time i'm like i'm sitting here waiting to see my husband and nobody not saying nothing what's going on so i kept getting up like hey you know hey guys hey how y'all doing all right you know through the, through the crying and the tears <clears throat> like what's going on why nobody saying anything where is he is he dead did he die like what happened and even the best friend that he was in the car with I don't know, I haven't heard anything from him. The wife, I don't know where she was. But all I know, I'm sitting in the waiting room. To me, it seemed like hours, but it probably was a few minutes. And you know, first they called, cause Techna wasn't his wife at the time. You're engaged. Cause we put December 12, 2012. At this point, it's December 1st, 2012. So they called his mom in there first because she had to sign the paperwork, which was embarrassing. I'm not your wife, and you call your mommy in there, but it's not his choice. They had to, you know, next to Ken. And since I wasn't taking his married to him yet, they had to call his mom to fill out the paperwork. But she needed me because she don't know everything like I know him. Me and him been the ones going to the doctor together, you know. He go to my OBGYN, I go to his primary. And vice versa, you know, I go to his, I can go to my primary and my dentist appointments. He got goals, so he don't really do the dentist like that. But, you know, I stay keeping myself up. So he go everything, every paperwork, every emergency, he's on there. Anything happen, anything show up, he's on there. And same with him. I go there, I know everything. So I ended up filling out the paperwork technically. And um, next thing you know, they said, okay, he want to see his wife. And I come in, I'm like, oh my God, let me get myself together. Let me get myself together. Cause I don't wanna see no blood, I don't wanna see no broken bones, I don't wanna see none of that. <laughs> I can't imagine him being like that. This is a built dude, he was built muscles. He had an uh, eight pack, just real cocky dude. He played football for so long, you know? Very athletic body. And um, by the time I walked in, I seen him, he looked normal. I'm like, oh my God. Baby, you okay? Are you okay? And he was like, yeah, man. Uh, man, we flipped. We flipped, the car flipped. And he was talking and I'm like, the car flipped, okay. So what happened, you know? Um, your arm hurt, your, your leg hurt, what happened? You know, you a little shooken up, you know, they, you scared, you okay? And he said, yeah, I'm fine, I'm all right. I'm all right, baby, be okay. I'm gonna be okay, baby. And I'm like, okay. I felt better, but I just hated his seeing him like that because you know he had the um the collar on his neck, so you know he wouldn't move his neck. I found that kind of weird, but I'm like, okay, you know the paramedics probably had to do that because the car did flip. So I'm like, you know where your homeboy at? I don't know. It was in the rain, always. The car dirty. And I said, where your homeboy? He was like, he don't know where Nick at. He don't know where he at. I said his name, but I don't think Nick at. <laughs> um. Next thing you know, the doctor came in. Y'all. The doctor came in with a scalpel. You know, they had like little 
the little scalpel like um not really sharp but it's like a little scalpel where you can like a butter knife kind of they had his shoes off they cut all his clothes off all he had was um but it looked like his boxers or something like that on him uh, they cut all his clothes off. I'm like, God, they did so much and I don't see no blood. I see scratches on his face, on his arm. That's about it. Y'all, man. That doctor came over there, y'all. Get it together. Get it together. That doctor came over there with this butter knife and told me to look. They put the butter knife, he scraped the butter knife on the bottom of his feet. No reflexes. He didn't feel any of that. My heart sank. I didn't know what that meant. What do you mean? He don't have no reflexes. What are you talking about? The worst day of my freaking life. My backbone, my friend, my best friend. The doctor said that they need to have surgery in the morning. They can't do anything right now because he swelled up so bad. He went from looking normal to like a person I couldn't even recognize. His body blew up so bad he was already 210 pounds built nice body arms this man had to be like three 300 he was 289 i think and at the at the highest i think he got to like 300 from fluid and just his body just getting swelled up like that i'm sorry y'all um the worst freaking night the worst day night three months of my life we spent three months in the hospital i didn't eat for weeks i was already thick i was probably was like 180 pounds no not even probably 160 i went down to 120 pounds i didn't eat my mom made me eat she said baby you're gonna kill yourself and I felt like I was already dying because the best part of my life, besides my twin sisters, is in a situation, in a position like this. They end up having surgery the next day. I stayed like a fiance should stay. I stayed. He had, my mom stayed with me too. My sister had to go get her babies together, her kid, because she only had the oldest one, Maya. Um, the mom stayed with me, his mom. And I'm so happy I'm driving and doing this because I'm staying focused because I probably would have broke down completely by now, y'all. If I was out at home video did video on this. But um he had surgery. The first surgery was he broke his neck in his back. His thorax level his I think it was T6 and T7 or T5 and T6 something like that and then his C4 and C3 I believe C3 and C4 the worst day in my life the worst weeks month this, this still feel like a dream this is still like the worst this is the worst I don't wish this on my worst enemy I don't wish this on nobody but um starting to rain real bad now y'all but um he wound up having surgery on his neck first they had his neck fused they had to fuse his neck back together because whatever bone he broke there caused him to cause the worst damage, pretty much. The cervical level, I believe they call it, is the C4, C3, 
and C4, which has the most damage right there. Okay, now. Baby, turn these windshield wipers on faster because I can't see that. But, um, and then the third race level was the part where it wasn't really that bad because he didn't completely sever his um, spinal cord, but it was punctured. And when they showed me the um, the x-rays, it was unreal. You never imagine, you know, seeing your loved one, somebody you care about so much, bones or body as such, trauma. And just to see that this is actually going on inside of his body scared me. So they had to do the, the, the neck surgery first. And he, my baby was so uncomfortable. He was crying. He was like, I don't want nobody. I don't want them to touch me, baby. I don't want them to touch me. I'm like, they have to. They have to, babe. They have to. And all he wanted was me when he got out of surgery. He just wanted to make sure that I was okay. And the confirmation came from me that he was okay. Oh God, y'all, I got me crying and it's raining. <laughs> uh. So they had the surgery on his neck. He came out of there. He had a, um, oh God, what they call the throat thing. This is all over. I try to put all this behind because I hate to think about it. What are you talking about? This is a horror story. This is a horror story for the years. For every all Halloween coming up, this is a horror story for me. Um, he had a, a throat. Uh, oh, God. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about. He had the throat thing in the, uh, the whole. They had to put the tube down his throat. So he had an open wound in the front of his throat. God, my mind went blank. And I, I studied medicine, y'all. Uh, but um, he had that for the first the first surgery he had that and um I didn't understand what was going on but the reason he had that was because after the cervical uh surgery his lungs kept filling up with liquid with phlegm is what they said and he, they had to put that in there so he can breathe and they can get the phlegm out of there much as possible Oh my God, why did things go? He was fine, y'all. He looked good when I seen him. Get to the hospital. Not all of this. He just went downhill quick. Quick. Hopefully, I can hear me with his rain. Um, he went downhill quick. So they couldn't do the back surgery just yet because he just had the throat surgery. The spinal cord that's on, uh, not the throat surgery, but he had the spinal the upper spinal cord surgery first. Um he broke his rib, so but it wasn't they didn't fix that, they just left that as as is. Um he ended up having the back surgery. He was in so much pain they wound up putting him in a coma the back surgery. Ugh. Once he got to the back surgery, they then kind of clarified that his spinal cord was not severed and that it's no possible way that this could stop him from walking. That this, this, this shouldn't slow him down. He should with train uh, with physical therapy, a whole lot of training, a whole lot of faith. Ooh, I was praying, y'all. I had everybody in there praying. Every holy oil I can possibly find. Everything. But y'all, when he was in a coma and I wound up sleeping next to him, in the bed with him. Now, why I did that? I woke up. He was, you know, out of it. But I could hear him kind of moan in his sleep. And I woke up and why I seen Jesus, I seen his face. It was just so glowy and he was just bright looking down at the both of us. 
while I lay in this hospital bed with my baby. And I don't know what that meant. I still don't know what that means, but I seen God and I just knew that, you know, maybe, you know, God is telling him, okay, this is your, your second chance. I'm not going to allow you to die. So he wasn't able to speak for a long time. By now, was, I think I've been in the hospital for maybe a month. He wasn't able to speak. It felt like a month. Let's back up. Let me back up. It wasn't a month just yet. We were in the hospital after the, all the surgeries. He, it was maybe like two and a half weeks later. And um, December 12th, wedding day, came and went. And at this time, he couldn't speak. He was in a coma. And we finally did wake up. They took the tube out of his mouth. He still had the thoracic tube and it's down his throat. He still had that, but he was able to speak a little bit. They tried, they said that maybe his voice would come back eventually. His back was um, healing, but um, just the doctors kept telling me time will tell. Only time can tell. When a doctor tell you that, to me, I, I don't want to say it, y'all. But for me, I will never get my hopes up again when somebody say, time will tell. Time won't tell. Not to me. My time was taken away from me. Whew. So, he had the the back surgery he had the neck surgery so now he's pretty much healing they got him finally to wake up and I cried every night every night I lost so much weight because I felt like if he's not gonna be here what's the whole point of me being here this is my soulmate my soulmate and this happened to him. Such a gentleman. He was so romantic. A caring person. He's a man. He was a man, man. You know? Baby, don't worry about it. I'm going to go get your oil. Put the gas in your car. Go get your oil changed for you. You need money for your hair. You need money for your nails. Don't worry about it, honey. I got a surprise for you later. Candlelight dinners. Hold my hand. Open my door. Shivers is just, it was 10 for him. He believed in that highly. When somebody he loved and cared about, he gonna break his back to make sure that I had a smile on my face every morning. I don't know if somebody ever been in love to the point where you both, you go to sleep with each other every night but when you get off of work and you know you're finna get ready to see your man, I got butterflies. I had butterflies still after living with him for three, four years. I still got butterflies when I got off of work. No, I'm finna go home and see my man. To wake up next to him. It felt so good. Oh my, oh my God, it has to get better. It has to get better from this point on and then this happened. This happens. I even went through a point in my life where I'm like, is there, is there a God? Is there a God? Why did this happen to me? We both did the right thing besides shacking up. You know, we didn't, we, we both had real morals and we knew shacking up wasn't good. But we knew at the end of the day, we knew what we were doing. And we knew that we were going to get married and then have kids. We had it in order. Yeah, eventually, he was able, thank God, he was able to take the, the, the tube out of his throat. And was able to breathe. 
on his own without being bagged. I don't know if we have some medical trainers out there. You know, they know what medical bag is. They had to continue to pump air and suction him out to get the mucus so he can breathe clearly. He can easily suffocate for that. I have a, ooh, I got a tour with these dang on nurses at that point. Ooh, you talking about I never had a voice before because I always had a twin so she always spoke up for me. But he's talking about well, somebody you care about now I know what it feel like to have kids. Well, you're going to speak up because he was like my baby. He was my baby. Technically my husband, but my baby at that point. I had to speak up for him. Y'all need to get y'all ass in here and help him because he can't breathe. I even did got it to the point where I did it myself. North Broward. Is it Broward Health? It's Broward Health, y'all. The one like they just didn't want to do anything. Like they was just lazy ass people. I stayed up watching him breathe because I wanted to make sure he was breathing. I stayed up watching his chest go up and down. Now when he gestured to me, like I need you. Like he need me to suck to him. I did it myself. Cause they took too long to come. You're not finna let my husband sit here and can't breathe. I can only imagine what that feel like now, not being able to breathe clearly. Cause I already know what that feel like when you got cold in your throat and you trying to, <coughs> you want to cough that shit up, but he can't cough it up. He was so weak, he couldn't cough nothing up. Long story short, well not short at all, but um, I ended up, he ended up taking the tube out, he was able to talk. Y'all, we still got married. <laughs> it wasn't the 12th like we planned. It was actually the 21st. So we got married December 21st, 2012. What do my sister have on this floor? Is that a floor mat? I ran it over now. So, he was able to talk, so, you know, by the 21st, because I still wanted to get married to him, I felt like I was going to be his motivation, and I thought I was going to be his motivation to get up, so I want to try harder. So I stayed and we got married the 21st of December 2012. He was not able to speak completely, but he was able, you was able to understand him say certain things. So when that pastor came in that pastor Dozier, thank you. When he came in there and told me, yeah, it's pouring down over here, y'all. And he said, you know, do you do? And he said, I do. That was the only thing that came out clearly. Didn't go to work for three months. Thank God I know how to save. And it's so much, so much to, to the background of it, but, you know, I don't want to get into that because... It's irrelevant. But just the fact that I wasn't his wife, him with him coming in, and he had kids, so many other things happened in between all of that. That was hurtful too. Because here I am living with this man. We have our own personal bills together. And you guys just decided to just split the money amongst. That's a whole nother story. We, I don't even want to get into that. But, um, I'm thankful he's here. Because throughout this process, I had to eventually get back to work three months later. Because I stayed in the hospital with him. Throughout that time, he had the surgeries. He had um, physical therapy. They wanted to make sure he was able to hold a fork, uh, hold a spoon, hold something. He was able to sit up by himself. 
I can't believe I went through something like this. It was numb. If you don't know what numb feel like, imagine being numb for three months. That's the worst pain. Um. Oh yeah. But uh, eventually got to work. I had to change my whole schedule because I couldn't fathom the thought of being the chipper, hyper, personable person that I am and speaking to my colleagues, speaking to the people, the residents that live there, knowing the personality that I have, it was completely changed. So I worked at night, overnight, so I didn't have to see anybody. Every time I speak about this situation, I cry. Still, after 11 years, y'all, imagine back then when I had to go to work and face people. I couldn't even have a conversation with anyone without thinking about what was going on in the hospital while he's there. But whatever. Fast forward, we went to... When I, every day after work, I left the hospital in my work clothes. Left work, back to the hospital. Took a shower at the hospital. I lived at the hospital. I found some strength in my grandmother. God bless her soul. And she said, you know, go get your house. I didn't think at the age of 25, 24, that I'll be going to get a house. Y'all, when something tragic happens, a blessing comes out of it. Which I'd rather not have the house. I'd rather have my husband well and able to do everything he was able to do prior to this. Um... I guess everything that happened by my house was able to keep my mind off of what I just went through. And going to look at houses was just like an uplift. Like, oh my God, that's pretty. Yeah. Hold on, y'all. sister came out I done rolled over her carpet my bad let me get this stuff out of here Alright, I'll be back, y'all. It's raining. I don't want my camera to get wet. Hey, 
Hey y'all, I'm back. Let me adjust you. I want to finish the story, horror story for me, about my husband getting into his car accident while I was home asleep. I have so much stuff I need to do today. We'll be on the road. Yeah, I might not know or remember, but because we're going to Costa Rica in a few days to top off my birthday month. Come on, man. But um, I left off about my husband being in the um, getting ready to leave out the hospital. He had a trach. Um a trachea put in so he was able to breathe and throughout that time he was doing physical therapy I was still working nights just because I couldn't fathom the thought of even speaking to anyone or being in front of anyone um I got my hair put up because it's hot out here and I feel like sweating it out I guess flat flat ironed it so my homegirl can braid it for me so I can put my wig on um but he was getting ready to come home and my mindset was that I wanted him to come home not to a rental property but to something that we owned and I did just that I kept my mind off him being in the hospital him being there by himself but I was literally my body my mental was slowly being thrown in the trash just by me sitting there watching him in a hospital not able to do anything not able to move and um it was painful so when I look at houses this was like a, a, a big outlet I was so happy just to get out and look at houses and to kind of like I couldn't keep my mind off of my husband obviously but Oops, excuse me. The fact that I was looking at something pretty, something that I'm finna get ready to make a big, big decision on, you know, it gave me a reason to still stay in this, stay in this situation, stay in this marriage. It gave me a reason to still stick in here. Maybe he'll fight harder to actually stand up, to start walking, to get his stuff back to the world. Um... So eventually, you know, I wanted to move away from the city that we in, the hood that we in. <laughs> I wanted to get away from here. But his brother, his oldest brother, is here. His mom is here. And I was kind of afraid of moving away from the people that's going to help me, you know? And he's such a scary man. You you won't even think that he's a scary person <laughs> just by his, his his stature, you know. A big arms and just muscle bound. You won't even think he's scared of the like the, the silliest stuff he's so afraid of. It's crazy. And I'm gonna just say after this accident, it made him worse. It made him worse. Bang. Oh, I would have never thought. It's a long, long story. It's a, this is a long story. Almost 11 years worth. I can finally tell this story without... <laughs> I can finally, you know, get it out. I still tear up. But before this, y'all, I couldn't even breathe. They was like hyperventilating. Like, you know, somebody help me. Somebody bag me, you know. But... We finally, I finally, you know, narrowed it down to a home that I was interested in. And it just happened to be in the same neighborhood, which I hate, but it was convenient, you know. He still had to, I still had to go through the process of my paperwork, and that was a lot of paperwork. I don't know whoever bought a home before bought a home, but that is hard just the mental the state of mind you have to be in the phone calls that's like three times i can't even say three times to find the car it's like 10 times because buying the car is easy now 
Now, if you didn't bought a house before, you know that's behind the car, like sign here, sign here, sign here. But I was sitting up about 30 minutes signing. When my wrist started cramping up, I had carpet tunnel. I'm like, my God, like, I need a stamp. I need to get a stamp now for my next house I'm gonna buy. Speaking into existence. But, um, we finally decided to, decided, we finally decided on a home. And I was showing him the pictures while he was in the, the hospital bed. And the doctors kind of like broke it down. Like, okay, he can't be in here forever. It's been three months. It's time for him to go and just, you know, go out there into the world. I'm like, okay, I was nervous. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? You know, he still got a trach in. He still can't do pretty much nothing. What am I supposed to do? He wasn't a vegetable, you guys, but he was, he couldn't do much. And it, it, it kind of scared me. It kind of scared me. Because I'm like, here we are. I'm a young person. He's seven years older than me. And in my early 20s, I'm taking care of a grown ass man. Like, it went downhill so fast from enjoying each other's company, partying, you know, him enjoying life again because, you know, he he got his divorce and me never been married before and hitting the road, traveling, going shopping almost every weekend. You know, he was, we were both hustlers, you know, we was making our money. You know, he was the type of gentleman where Oh, you know, babe, no, you're not my wife yet. You know, don't worry about anything. You're not my wife. I'm going to take care of it. If I need your help, I'll let you know if I need your help. He paid my car note, y'all. He, like, it was just such. Thank you for stopping. Appreciate it. It was just so nice to know that somebody's here helping me. And I didn't have to just rush into something all by myself to now I felt like I was all by myself again. Once he got out of the hospital... I felt so alone. Like we didn't have, we couldn't move directly into the, the new home because it was, it wasn't even listed yet. When I seen this home, it was like God just said, ah, this is for you. This is for you. So we couldn't move into the home right away and still had to get appraised and all that other stuff. So we still had to stay in our old, our old home. It's just luckily our old home was literally the next street over. <laughs> so he was able you know, to get over there pretty smoothly. I'll tell y'all about that, you know, as we continue the story. That was crazy. But, um, they had much to pack up. Um, at that time, I pretty much threw everything away because I had lost so much weight. Due to him being in the hospital, just my whole world felt like it was over. Like, my music so loud. Um... So yeah, when he finally got home, he just laid there. He just sat in his wheelchair. He, the kids came over, he has two boys, and it just seemed like everything was so different. The house felt so numb and cold. Just how I felt in the hospital when all of this happened. And I was scared of actually having his kids over because Oh, even before he left the hospital, thank God. They took the trick out. He was able to do everything on his own with the breathing and able to cough up cold phlegm, sorry, TMI, on his own. And that's what they really wanted him to do before they took the trick out. They didn't want him to suffocate on his own spit. And that was a blessing because I was so afraid of him coming home with that. Oh, I was afraid. And I used to have an Uncle Raz. Oh, he, God bless us all. He had one permanently, I guess, from smoking. And he would, he would always do that. I was always afraid of that. And actually, thinking about it my whole entire life, I was so afraid of different people. Not different like, as in color, but different as in, you know, anything that's disabled with them, anything that was stopping them to be normal. My, my normal, you know. I was always afraid of that. Now look at this, look at me. I 
have a whole family that's abnormal. My husband is like disabled in a wheelchair. I would have never thought in a million years that I would be this type of person, that I would be this person with a husband like this. I congratulate all, I congratulate all the women who are with men who are disabled. This shit is hard, man. Like I don't get my door opened up anymore. I don't have my bath ran for me no more. He can't get up and cook dinner and say, babe, I got it, don't worry about it. Breakfast in bed, I have to actually get up and work. Get up and go to work, I have to go to work to make sure the bills and everything is paid, even though he do get a disability check. But that's not nothing. So with all my businesses I got going on, I need them to even enjoy life for me to, to move forward to something more. You know, we've been in this home for 13 years. It's time for us to get something else. But after past all that, you know, I congratulate the women who are actually married to disabled men. You know, as a woman, we want to be catered. We want to be baby. And I don't, I, I haven't had that feeling since he's been like this. I haven't had that nurturing feeling. I haven't had that, that protection, that protection that you feel when your man's taking care of everything. Somebody, a robber come in the house and get everybody on the floor, you know, oh my God, husband saved me. I don't have that anymore. I have to protect my family and his boys and my dog now and it's so painful that is so painful i don't feel like a woman woman i don't feel like my feminine self how i used to be i feel like i always have to be hardcore now and just make sure nobody don't play with me because they know when they come over to do certain works a job like you know fixing my air conditioner or me, he normally go get my oil and stuff down on my car. People took advantage of me. For so long, until the point I said, whatever, you know, God, if you're gonna bless me, you're gonna bless me. Yeah, I don't even care. Whatever you say how much your oil changes, whatever you say I need done to the car, whatever. I get it done to the car. And then I'll come home and let him know how much something is. He'd be like, can't hey, what? What's wrong with you? You paid this much that car didn't need that. And I but I didn't know. I didn't want to bother him. It sucks. But um Yeah, he came home, he the trick was gone. And in the meantime I was going back and forth to the closing office and closing on the house and finally got our key and it was time for to, to move. Maybe about I think out of the hospital like June. Maybe June or July of 2013. And we got the house. We actually closed on the house in October. Right after my birthday, October 2nd. So it was like October 13th. We were actually in our new home. Um, 2013. So... He, he came home and we closed on the house, which was a headache. Um, got the key and it's, you know, it was time to pack up. I did all the packing up myself, which wasn't much because I lost so much weight and I had to throw majority of my clothes away. I kept my shoes, of course, ladies. Um, anything that he had, he pretty much didn't want anymore because he was like, you know, he want to put on something that's going to be easy and convenient to put on which I understood. So I bought him a whole lot of clothes and things that's just so easy to just put on for him, for me to put on him. No, it's just, it's a lot. It's a life changer, a big time life changing. Tragic event that happened in my life. This is a, this is a horror story, y'all. I think this top all horror stories. Finally moved. Get into our new home, I cried. I cried. Cause I'm like, I did it by myself. I did it by myself. I didn't have him, he was in the hospital. I did it. 
but how he got there, okay, y'all? Let me tell you how y'all get how he got there. I rented a U-Haul to put all my stuff in, all his medical supplies and stuff in, and his brother had a ramp. You know how to get like the cars off the uh, the back of a a, a flatbed or their motorcycles and stuff. He had that, so he had a wheelchair where we had to push. He didn't have a motorized wheelchair just yet, but um. He pushed him up the ramp thing in the back of the U-Haul, closed the damn U-Haul down, and he was back there with his, his brother. And I drove literally the, the next street over. And he put him in the house, rode him in the house, and started unpacking everything. My his my brother-in-law, his brother, you know, and his homeboys helped me take everything out of the car. And my dog, my baby princess, God bless her. She's passed away in September. Um, but yeah, he had me put everything in the house and I'm just so happy to have his side. I don't have too many men in my family, too many young men, but I was just so happy to have his family and his brothers and his friends that actually helped me do a lot to get the house situated and comfortable for him. Um, in the beginning, I thought he was actually gonna sleep in the bed with me but he got a hospital bed. And when he got the hospital bed, there's no way a king size bed and a hospital full size bed would fit in that room. You know, my started my first home, you know, it wasn't too big. It wasn't big at all actually. But it was mine, you know. And we had this kids' room, which they were young, but now that they're getting older, they're gonna need their own room soon. They fight all day. They don't wanna be next to each other. But I eventually decided that he's going to have to go in the guest bedroom. If he don't want to get in the bed with me, temporarily is what I thought. And, you know, he just got accustomed to having his own space. And I got accustomed to having my own space with my dogs, you know. And having my own bathroom as a woman. Ladies, y'all know we need our own bathroom. And... I like having my own bathroom, but I want my husband with me in my room, in our room. But he's still, you know, in the guest bedroom. And he loves his hospital bed. He loves where he can push a button to sit up. He loves the button where he can push a button to lay back down, where he can turn to the side. He like that. And me personally, I don't want that as my bed. I don't want a bed where you can push a button to turn me to the side. I don't want none of that. First of all, I'm a light sleeper, so any noise, that's gonna wake me up. So, eventually, you know, we got the house to get homey and my dad blessed us with furniture and then I bought the den, the, uh, the living room furniture, he bought the den furniture. And what's going on over here, y'all? I think it's breaking like this. And I was just so happy. I'm like, okay. We went to the next step now. Now it's time to do step two now. Let's start to our therapy again. Our physical therapy and it's, it's, we're gonna be walking in no time. That's what I'm thinking, y'all. Naive. Because the doctor gave me a little bit of hope where he said that his spine was not severed. So there's nothing saying that he cannot walk again. But you know what, guys? I felt like he did more in the hospital for these damn nurses than what he do at home for me. And I want to say for the first year, I seen him do a lot. And I was so happy and so proud of him. And after that second year, you know, I was going to his daughter's appointments. I was going to his physical therapies. And to the point where he said he didn't want to go anymore. You know, he was tired. And I think at this point, you know, he lost himself at this point. I felt like, you know, he was really going through something really, really bad. And it took a toll on both of us. When you love somebody so deeply, anything that that person go through, you're going to go through it too. My hair started to fall out. I started not, not not eating, I started overeating. 
and gaining so much weight and then I had a job where I sat down all day so that was even worse I was miserable and I'm like oh my god like I have my dogs to come home to that show me love and they you know they're so happy and they barking at the window waiting for my car to back in they know that happy me and then to sit here and have my husband which I used to be happy and cheerful and hug me and pick me up and swirl me around when I walked through the door I didn't have that anymore so things started to feel real real lonely quick I said okay you know I want to start doing things can we go out he'll get a little courage and take a Percocet and fathom to get to our destination but once he get out there he's asleep you know which is kind of embarrassing <laughs> to sleep at restaurants to sleep at movies to sleep we went to a bar one time he was sleep at the damn bar like everybody in the club dancing and he sleep my visit line bothered me um Yeah, it's crazy. And we kind of got to the point where I didn't want him to be uncomfortable anymore. I'm like, are you that uncomfortable? That, you know, you need to go to sleep or take a Percocet so you can be comfortable enough to even be out for a few hours. And he said, yes, he's in that much pain. And I couldn't believe it. I'm like, how does somebody lose all feeling and ability to walk or move their legs but still in pain? So I was so confused. I'm like, thank you, God, I guess. You know, because if he still feel pain, that means he's able to walk eventually. And he said he felt pain forever. It's been 13 years. He's still, not 13, I'm sorry. It's been 11 years and he still feel pain. And I'm like, okay. So slowly and slowly, he stopped going to therapy, stopped going to training, he stopped having his homeboy, who's a physical therapist, come over to help train him and work him out at home because it was a headache. You know, we used to use this program where it was government assistance where they came and picked him up. And they picked us up because we didn't have the transportation to make sure that he got to certain locations easily without him having to be taken out of his wheelchair. Should I get off here? Get off here. And I thought it was kind of convenient, honestly. But take no, it wasn't convenient because when you're ready to go, you're ready to go. You got to wait for the people to come get you. They got other people in the car with you. You have to make sure this person get dropped off first before you get dropped off or get picked up. They running late, so you running late. That was a lot. That was a lot, and I always get to myself, okay, before I go buy me a new car, can, do you want to think about getting a car?